So welcome back. So we were continuing with the sustainable biorefineries in the previous lecture. What we have seen are the different sources of biorefinery that the biomass, it may be lignus cellulox biomass. Then uh, when we also discussed regarding the 2G fuels and then finally we came to the 3G fuels which is fuels derived from microalgae and we also saw the advantages and disadvantages of these fuel systems. So as a whole, the, although the product what we get is a fuel and these fuels they are combinedly known as biofuels. So in the current uh, lecture what we will see is the bio based fuels, we will discuss the fuels which we actually will be taking up later. So first we will just give a short description what are the various processes for conversion of biomass. We have discussed this in the previous lecture, still I want to just take a summary of that. Then uh, if there is biomass, then there should be some biofuel associated with it, some conversion process. So what we will focus is primarily on the diesel type biofuel. And then we will also discuss the process which is called hydro deoxygenation. So suppose the conventional process for uh, production of biofuel from biomass is usually depends upon as I told you either two different ways, one is the thermochemical treatment which is uh, gasification, then pyrolysis, all these methods while on the other side you have the fermentation type of methods. So these type of methods are the primary classification but if you do not want to do these two then there is one example which you will take up later which is the hydro deoxygenation. So just to summarize what we have studied earlier is we have studied that in the biomass what we will be studying is the processes which we have uh, gained is the processes for conversion of biomass which is your uh, combustion, we will discuss this in detail combustion then gasification then pyrolysis. Now these three processes are all equivalent to the thermochemical process, okay. thermochemical. It means somewhere heat is required. So this pyrolysis, I just want to say this pyrolysis is similar to like coking what you do in the petroleum industry. Okay. And uh, if you do a pyrolysis, it is done at intermediate temperature, you get directly oil, but that oil is not such stable. So we will see that later, this is called bio oil, this is not that stable. So but it represents similar to that of oil refinery, the diesel and petrol which we get from oil refinery. Nevertheless, we will see the later, so all these processes whether we are taking combustion, gasification, pyrolysis, they if I want to write down we will see in the contents they are structure independent. So it does not depend upon what sort of structure you have. Ultimately you do gasification or you do combustion or you do pyrolysis, ultimately you will be not depend on the let us say the content of oxygen. Another part is the fermentation that is the fermentation processes. So fermentation processes will obviously depend upon the, this fermentation process will depend upon the structure. So for example, you will require a particular enzyme for the conversion of hexone that is 6 membered sugar to simple sugars or but you will have a different uh, structure or different yeast or different enzyme you will be requiring for the conversion of pent so, so that is the pentase or uh, five membered ring to sugar. So that is it depends upon the structure of the biomass. So let us discuss the biomass conversion routes which we have studied till date. I will just roughly go through the details. So if I want to uh, that the source is primarily this biomass we have seen, I will just whatever I have explained in the previous slide I will just bring a layout. So you can do a pyrolysis what I said just now, you get bio oil this is one of the product. But bio oil as I told you they are not thermally stable because what happens is you take the biomass, you heat it in the absence of oxygen, you will get a liquid part which is the oil part and you will also have a uh, tar part that is primarily coke. So you know, so ultimately you have disposed of that coke. So, but anyway, nevertheless, this is a way of producing bio oil, or you can directly do combustion. If you do combustion, like in you know, you know this wood, 
what we do in the what we can uh, heat the wood and use its heat to for cooking and all these things combustion so in a way i can write here as heat or power heat or power either way it can be used either as a heat or the power source okay or you can do a gasification so the gasification means you treat it with steam and convert it to primarily to syngas which we have seen that in the previous module so syngas and mixtures of carbon monoxide and hydrogen they can be combined to form alcohols so that's it or the primary alcohols which you can produce is methanol for example or ethanol so you have those different catalysts this is the one part or you can directly ferment it you ferment these you do a fermentation you form ethanol butanol or lactic acid you can do ethanol or butanol or lactic acid so you know this important of these chemicals so that's why i have said that it depend upon the structure of the biomass because you will have to use a particular enzyme for the fermentation to produce either ethanol or butanol or lactic acid or then another method is you can also do a direct extraction now this is another important uh, method so if you see a biomass there are many biomass which in the tree there is a liquid like substance a waxy like substance so these wax like substance if they are processed these are called as terpenes for example you have natural rubber isoprene that is a one sort of terpene so these uh, compounds they will be have a uh, structure of c5h8 to the power of n n can be any number greater than 1 so for example this one uh, you have the structure of natural rubber isoprene so you have ch3 here you have a double bond here and you have the polymer matrix in this manner this is called terpenes extraction then if you don't want to go to this then is the hydrolysis part what does this hydrolysis mean it means we are separating the cellulosic and hemicellulosic component from the lignin cellulose is very easy to separate so it can be done very easily to convert it back to sugar but so what happens in cellulose or whether it's hemicellulose there are lot of rings which are attached in uh, cellulose it's usually a six membered ring while in hemicellulose it's is a five membered ring five membered rings are very difficult to convert while so six membered rings are easily convertible to simple sugars so then what we can do we can uh, either convert them to am one of the way they do is you can also convert it to amino acids and from the amino acids you can consider two different compounds such as ethanolamine or alkanolamine ethanolamine or you have butane diol okay or you can uh, do the steps which i just now told you convert them to aqueous sugars now when you aqueous sugars means i am telling it is either hemicellulose or cellulose so that you can convert it to simple sugars such as sorbitol or let's say xylitol okay or uh, hmf we will see hmf later in the next lecture the you it importance of this chemical sorbitol you know it is found in our human body it has a structure it has number of oh groups basically so if i want to write down although i'm not able to draw it the correct structure because it's a three dimensional so you have oh here then you have a uh, oh here so oh here so it's alternative oh bonds oh here then oh here finally you have another oh here such type of structures they are known as sorbitol it is present in our human body so this is the overall way how the biomass is treated so you have the biomass at the center you can have any of these roots so all the r and d research and developments are carried out in these all the roots together these roots gasification is, is actually the source of fuel while the lower part is actually the source of again fuel but through fermentation root for example if you want to see the biochemical production of ethanol so we will see the biochemical production of ethanol 
now. So what you do is uh, usually you have bioethanol and biobutanol. Biobutanol is what they say is much easier to blend with gasoline as compared to bioethanol and uh, the process is bit the fuel itself is non-corrosive while ethanol is corrosive. So it, nevertheless the process which I have already discussed just want to repeat it. So you have the lignocellulose. lignocellulose biomass it means it has lignin plus cellulose in that along with hemicellulose okay so now you have the pretreatment pre you do a pretreatment of it then what you do when you do a pretreatment you have one part you will have cellulose and lignin so lignin i have written down because it's a solid component cellulose is the liquid component then what you do, do a hydrolysis, you do a hydrolysis with enzymes, then you form simple sugar such as glucose, glucose, then you do a fermentation, this is very by yeast to form ethanol or maybe it is not directly ethanol, you will have a mixture of water and ethanol. So, I will say that it is beer or, or it is a mixture of ethanol and water. You do the distillation then, you do distillation, you get ethanol. This is the way the biochemical way it occurs. Okay. Now another way it can be the what you do with the hemicellulose, you need to have a different enzyme. So in the hemicellulose, when you do a pretreatment, the hemicellulose and cellulose are separated. Usually they are done in the acidic environment. Then what you do? This hemicellulose, for example, one of the reason, one of them hemicellulose can be xylose. So you either you can use a catalytic conversion, catalyst processes. You do a catalyst process and you product produce some chemicals like benzene, toluene, xylene. Okay. Else you go ahead, I write here, I mean so or, so I will make another line here or you do a fermentation again with this, you can get ethanol. So this will give both will uh, require this fermentation. So these processes can be combined. But as a catch, you did require different enzymes. One in in one of the case you are converting simple sugars such as glucose to ethanol. Another you are uh, converting the five-membered xylose to ethanol. So this will require two different enzymes. Then what to do with the lignin which is coming here? So so here you have lignin coming out in large amount because that is the solid component. So lignin what they do either you can purify and sell as it is purify, purify and then it becomes dry lignin or you can burn it or you can burn it so it becomes useful for power generation. So all of them are used whether it is direct fuel or so it can either generate heat or electricity, heat or electricity. I will take this unit of the separation from fermentation later on this particular okay, from the this fermentation unit to ethanol because this is not a normal distillation because at 96 percent and around 350 Kelvin and a 6 percent of ethanol and water. So, if you have a composition of less water and at a temperature of this, the ethanol and water will become a azeotrope and this azeotrope that is what require a azeotropic distillation unit. So, I will take this up later. So, just to keep in mind this is the basically the biochemical production of ethanol. So, 75 percent of this ethanol the source is from the food crop nowadays. So that is, I do know it is a challenging part because you are competing with food crops. Moving ahead, so that is why this 
Now we have seen bioethanol. Now we go to biodiesel. This is another source of fuel. So biodiesel, also known as bioethanol, often known as bioethanol is a blend of methyl and ethyl esters of fatty acids. So the in short they are called as fatty acid methyl ester or fatty acid ethyl esters. Diesel biodiesel blends have a higher oxygen concentration due to the ester group they burn more efficiently than regular diesel made from fossil fuels. So what are the source of this biodiesel? Vegetable oil are the source and low molecular weight alcohol such as methanol, ethanol. Either it can be vegetable oil or low molecular weight alcohol such as ethanol or methanol. So they will undergo transesterification to create biodiesel. Rapeseed oil, soybean oil and sunflower oil are the three most widely used vegetable oils in Europe. While in Malaysia and Thailand they use palmitic oil or palm oil for biodiesel manufacturing. Now the palm oil is having a long fatty chain with a double bond in between. So it helps in the transesterification process. Now the issue is we may uh, say that uh, we should have exactly the similar concentration like the fuel which we obtain from oil refinery. But sometimes oxygen content in biomass type of compound may be useful, beneficial because this biomass if it has more oxygen when it does combustion it is clean, it causes less smoke and no mass is also lost. So it may not be an disadvantage to have oxygen in the fuel and it may also have uh, more of the branched nature, the biomass. So in a way we may have, we may overcome some of the disadvantages of oil refinery, of oil. So that you do not require further separation because in the oil refinery if you remember you have this heteroatom, you need to separate them, you need to do some process hydroprocessing. But in this case since it already have oxygen and we want the combustion to occur with oxygen, so you do not require those processing steps, so require less of the investment in the case of biorefinery. So what are the different uh, catalysts? They are usually this transesterification reactions, they take place in the presence of catalysts and these catalysts are alkaline medium because the acidic medium is not known to give much of the conversion. So these are the most effective catalysts are sodium hydroxide and sodium methoxide. So it is also possible for acids to catalyze the process, however, at a much lower efficiency. So the expression that is a reaction for the transesterification of a vegetable oil with methanol proceeds in this manner. So you have the esters, so you have the vegetable oil at one end, CH2, you have the ester group, CO, this is an alkyl group R1, then CH. O, it should be a double bond, CH2, R3. So this R1, R2, R3 are having alkyl length of different chains. Then it reacts with methanol. So what you do, you react with excess methanol. Okay transesterification. So this is the expression for triglyceride or vegetable oil. It is a reversible reaction in the presence of catalyst. The catalyst I have already told it is methanol or, meth or uh, sodium methoxide. What you have is finally you will have the fatty acid methyl ester. So what you have this double bond will get uh, this it will become CH3. CH3 O C CH3 then you have again CH3 here C double bond O the other structure remains the same C a double bond then R sorry this will be always same no R R2 and R3 plus what you have is glycerol plus glycerol. So glycerol you know it is a structure which has 3 OH group. So this is the group C. Okay. So what you have is this is for example FAME fatty acid methyl ester okay. and this is your glycerol. And this is your vegetable oil or triglycerides, whichever way 
is the chemical structure for vegetable oil. So, vegetable oil when reacts with methanol, excess methanol I would say in the presence of alkaline catalyst, it will be converted to fatty acid methyl ester and glycerol. So, so moving ahead, but it is not uh, so easy because this reaction actually suffers from two drawbacks. Uh, one, two drawbacks is the content of water and the content of there is a part called as free fatty acids. Not all fatty acid will be linked with the vegetable oil. There may be also in a vegetable oil, you may have free fatty acids. So, this free fatty acid, they may convert to soap, which is not at all good. So, we will see how to overcome that. So, it is typical for oils and fats to contain modest quantities of water that's and free fatty acid. These are also sometimes called as FFA, free fatty acids. FFA. So, it is just an organic acid with a long alkyl chain length with a COOH group that is called free fatty acid. So, these are not connected to the glycerol backbone and cause adverse effects. As a result of the reaction between the free fatty acid, so it is given by this RCOOH and the alkaline catalyst, if they react, they will produce soap. So, a portion of the catalyst is just neutralized, but so if there is catalyst, it will react with this free fatty acid and it will convert to soap. So, what has happens in this? is that this reaction will happen. So, we do not want that. Okay. So, you have this organic acid, let us say like this. So, it is not connected, right. This, this compound is not connected to the glycerol that the, in the vegetable oil triglyceride chain. So, it is free. So, it will react with the sodium hydroxide, which is the catalyst in our case and it may form soap. The soap is, you have the formula of soap, sodium salts plus water. So, you need to avoid this, that is important because it is taking up all the catalyst, it is neutralizing the catalyst. So, you would not be having a high conversion of the transesterification process. So, the process of soap may hinder further process. Therefore, the free fatty acid according to industry, they should be below 0.5 percent by wet. So, in the presence of water, now this is all about free fatty acid. Now, what happens if water is there? Now, triglycerides then can be hydrolyzed to create a free fatty acid, again free fatty acid. So, if water is there, then again triglycerides can then change to free fatty acid. So, both the things, I water as well as free fatty acid should be at a minimum. So, the counter content is also designated with a weight percent not more than 0.2 percent. So, if there is water, this type of reaction will occur. So, you have the So, you have the triglyceride or the vegetable oil as before. This water will react with this in the presence of the catalyst. Okay. It will form a diglyceride for example. So, what happens? This will reduce one of the alkyl chain length to fatty acid. So, it will convert from a triglyceride to, so if this is triglyceride, this will come to diglyceride. So, diglyceride will be this molecule, CH3, you will have OH here and then you have CH3, CH3, O then C, okay. this is diglyceride, diglyceride plus free fatty acid. So, this R1 as breaks away and forms an organic acid. So, you have OH, then C. So, this is called the free fatty acid. So, now remember this R1 is pretty long. Now, if it is produced again free fatty acid in the previous slide, this again will be again converted to soap. So, ultimately you are consuming catalyst. That is the reason these two are very important. The wet percent of FFA that is free fatty acid and water is thus has to be governed a priori. So, for the diesel type fuel, uh, which is how you prepare the biodiesel. So, this is the process. So, what you have is you have oil and fats as the your source, then you do a pretreatment. 
this is for a biodiesel process. You do then finally you have the trans esterification, trans esterification. Then what you have after trans esterification you will have a uh, phase separation because you will have ethanol, uh, you will have something which is a uh, diesel component that is same, it will be lighter as compared to glycerol. Okay. So what you do, you have do a phase separation by density. after the reaction. So, you will have some product where you again do a distillation, a heavier product, you do distillation, you get crude glycerol. Okay. Now, some amount of methanol may also come, this methanol you may add up here as the in the feed. So, here you can add catalyst at the starting, the alkaline medium and then you can recycle the form of the methanol back, methanol to the transesterification because you need a excess of methanol. So, you should not lose out any methanol. Now, what you do after you do phase separation, you do have the uh, catalyst also. So, the catalyst has to be neutralized. So, this has to be neutralized. You do a neutralization of the catalyst medium by passing HCl acid primarily which is HCl and so you will be having a salt when you pass. So, you have neutralized the acid and you have separated out the glycerol. So, what you are left with is a wet form of the frame. So, you dry it, you do a washing as well as drying, washing and drying, you do the frame that is the biodiesel, you get biodiesel out the final product. This is the way biodiesel is obtained in the conventional industrial setup. So, sometimes if you do not want to have crude glycerol, uh, you can also do a distillation, you can find, uh, you can purify the glycerol also. Sometimes what they will do, I am sorry, I have made some, some uh, just some corrections. When they do the distillation, methanol will come from the distillation train and uh, if you can either have a crude glycerol, crude glycerol coming which you can just burn off, but ultimately burning off is not a solution because we are wasting the energy or if you want to reuse it, what you do is a glycerol purification, you do a glycerol purification. So, you get a refined glycerol. Okay. So, this is the way the entire process stream for biodiesel works. So, finally, this biodiesel is nothing but a mixture of FAME or FAE, fatty acid methyl ester or ethyl, fatty acid ethyl esters. So, this is the process. So, I just now discussed the processing steps, the pretreatment, the triglycerides that is the oil is actually degummed. Now, what is this degum process means? Degum process means there may be phospholipids. Phospholipids means it will have a some hydrophilic group along with that some fatty acid group will be attached. So, hydrophilic group will be of a phosphatic ester and the remaining you have the long chain alkyl or fatty acid. So, this has to be removed otherwise they will have some problem while uh, processing. So, that is called degumming. You remove the phospholipids then they dry it and then finally, the free acid are removed. Now, the if there are more amount of free acid, you can remove by some other manner. So, that has to be done in the pretreatment itself. Then only you send it to transesterification. So, the phosphophilates, why are we removing? Because these are triglycerides produced by a phosphate ester with two fatty acid chains and one, one side chain. In the presence of the acidic catalyst, excess free fatty acid in the triglycerides are converted to appropriate methyl ester. Alternately, in an acid esterification unit, the free fatty acids are removed from the input for disposal as independent treatment. So, ultimately all these pre-processing steps actually tries to reduce the free fatty acid content. That is your primary job because you need to have a concentration less than 0.5 percent. So, let us move ahead. So, 
just to recall the processing steps, the triglycerides are transesterified with methanol in the presence of an alkaline medium following pretreatment. The phase separation as I told you is used to separate the FAE, the methyl ester, wherever I am writing it implies it is FAEE or FAME from the heavier glycerol phase. The catalyst is neutralized by adding an acid such as hydrochloric acid following which the biodiesel is washed to eliminate trace level of byproducts and dried. So, methanol is then sent back from the distillation train it is recycled to the transesterification reactor. So, the resultant crude glycerol I was telling either you can get a crude glycerol or a pharmaceutical grade glycerol. If it is a crude glycerol, the crude glycerol volume percent is around 80 to 85 percent. They can be utilized as it is or further purified using chemical treatment, evaporation, distillation. So, the treatment, the glycerol purification consists of chemical treatment, evaporation, distillation and then bleaching to produce glycerol of pharmaceutical quality which is greater than 99.5 volume percent. So, what are the disadvantages? So, there is some disadvantages transesterification. These are it is energy intensive. So, you require a lot of energy in the pretreatment and then some energy for the recovery and the distillation train. The recovery is the critical because recovery of the glycerol as a byproduct is difficult and uh, you are neutralizing the acid. So, if you want to neutralize the acid you will produce salts which are waste. So, it has a large amount of waste salts so that should be somehow be minimized. So now, uh, due to this disadvantages of chemical transfiguration, new technologies such as catalyst free approach based on supercritical methanol and enzyme based techniques have been proposed. For example, the enzyme based technique lipases are capable of catalyzing the transesterification of triglycerides in both aqueous as well as non aqueous environment. So, the enzymatic processes surpass the traditional process such as glycerol. So, what are the advantages for enzymatic process? It has first I would write air, the glycerol can be removed quickly and the free fatty acid if there are. So, if you have a feed content which has more amount of free fatty acid, it can be entirely converted to alkyl esters, it is the second advantage. So, making the process excellent for treating inexpensive waste fats and oil. So, that is why you go with lipase based technology. But it has disadvantages such as the production cost of the lipase, the catalyst production cost is considerably higher than that of a normal alkaline catalyst such as sodium hydroxide or sodium methoxide. Further, the catalyst separation still is a different, a difficult step I would say both in lipase or in the traditional method. So, if I want to compare both the processes that is the alkaline process and the lipase based process, what I get is. I can compare all this based on the reaction temperature. What are the factors I will look up? Suppose you want to pick uh, this process vis vis like whether traditional or you want to go with lipase based. You want to look at this temperature then the yield of yield of fame. So, how much of the fatty acid methyl ester I am producing? Then how much of water is there? So, before that water you need how much of FFA is in feedstock. Okay. Then uh, water, can it water in feedstock? Can it handle water in feedstock? Then how is the process of recovery of glycerol easy or difficult? Purification process, I would say purification process of fame primarily because this is what is biodiesel all about, production cost, production cost, production cost of catalyst, then catalyst separation. So, if I want to note down the points, which of this is good in let us say we have an alkaline process here and a lipase based process here, if I want to compare lipase based process. So, it is almost similar around 320 Kelvin, the temperature which is close to 305 Kelvin, not much of the difference in temperature wise. This is 
yield is normal in this case, this is higher I would say in this lipase based process. Can it handle higher amount of fatty acids in feedstock? No, it cannot handle, so it is actually converted to soap. But here yes, it can handle high amount. So it is converted to FEM, that is the advantage, biggest advantage of using lipase based process as a catalyst. Then how much of water in feedstock? Does it interfere in the reaction? Yes, we know that it, it interferes, it does not because it is independent because it can operate on both aqueous and non-aqueous environment. The recovery of glycerol, is it easy? Yes, it is easy in the case of lipase but is you know it is very difficult in the case of alkaline. Then the purification, what is the process for purification of drying this fatty acid methyl esters. So, you need repeated washing in this case, repeated washing, it does not have any such of washing, pure product is produced. The production cost of catalyst here it is low, but here it is high. So, if you are trying to look up one disadvantage, this is the one for lepase, it is a high production gas for catalyst, but the separation is difficult in both the places. So, if you are looking at the factor wise, so many of the points lipase scores well, but only one disadvantage is the production cost of the catalyst, this is you have to keep in mind. Moving ahead, now we have seen the alkali catalyst transesterification reaction cannot be performed on oils with a high free acid, fatty acid. The use of solid acid catalyst is thus recommended because it can catalyze. So, if I want to go with alkaline basically medium, so alkaline medium is fine, but you need a solid now acid castle because alkaline medium cannot handle high free fatty acid. So, it can catalyze the transesterification of triglycerides and esterification of free fatty acid concurrently both. It can convert free fatty acid to ester as well as triglyceride to ester together. So, you have the potential to completely replace homogeneous catalysts thereby eliminating separation, corrosion and environmental problems. So, these are the advantages. So, let us see one of the process flow diagram with a solid catalyst. So, we see a solid catalyst diagram. So, again you have the oil fats as oil and fats as the source. Now, you do a pretreatment like you do earlier for the alkaline medium, then the transesterification reaction takes place, transesterification. So, you have the glycerol and fame produced, you do a phase separation here, then you go to distillation, you distill the heavier product. Then you send the methanol back here, this is the methanol recycle, you require methanol. So, I mean you also put methanol here also because this is the recycle feed. Okay. So, you do a phase separation, then if you remember there were several steps after phase separation, drying, washing, all this that is I mean less because it has not much corrosive. So, you do directly a purification and you get biodiesel. Okay. And you do a distillation, you simply do a glycerol purification as I told you. And you get the refined glycerol. So, you, you are uh, saving on few steps after the phase separation, which is why this solid catalyst is useful and it is non corrosive and it can handle higher free fatty acid content in the feedstock. Now, we see one of the process, the process flow diagram, now I will talk about the ethanol fermentation. So, how ethanol is fermented with yeast and we have the azeotropic distillation being adopted. So, what they do the essentially the reaction is something like this, you have a C6 H12O6, it actually converts to 2 moles of ethanol and carbon dioxide, this is the reaction. Is it balanced? Let us see, it is 4, 6, yes it is balanced. So, it this takes place in the presence of yeast. So, 
this is the overall reaction. So, in this what you have, you have uh, 5 or 6 units, the first unit is the fermentation. So, what you do is in this particular first unit, you mix the, let us say I want to produce ethanol from biomass such as molasses, you send molasses here and you send uh, the acid, you, because in this molasses you require the acidic environment and uh, ammonium salt. So, you have one uh, agitator here, you add water, you prepare, you dilute it, this is called the dilution tank. Okay. So, you prepare the entire mixture and in the other which is the fermenter, you send this to a fermenter, in the fermenter you send the ye yeast. This is where this reaction occurs. When you have a yeast, what you do? The compound which is coming out, you separate in a rotary filter. So, this yeast is separated and the remaining solution goes to a flash unit. So, this is goes to a flash unit. So, what you do? You separate out the gases, that is the carbon dioxide, you vent it and the remaining liquid you send it for further processing. Now, the issue is this yeast is separated because uh, if you have the yeast going inside, it tends to decompose if the concentration of ethanol is more than 12 to 15 percent. So, it is works best around 12 to 15 percent of concentration of ethanol. So, you need to take this out. This yeast can be used for a cattle feed. So, now what you do, you take the liquid, you do a flash. So, this is the fermentation unit and you send it, separate the liquid part and you send the liquid to a beer distillation unit. The beer distillation unit has a stripper and rectifier. So, this is the stripper, let us say. So, it is a stage column. So, you have a staged column here. So, this is the residue. The residue is an additive for animal feed. So, this residue for it can be used as animal feed. So, this is your rectifier. So, what you have at the top is close to 50 percent ethanol water mixture plus water and some other products such as acetaldehyde that is CH3CHO as the byproduct. Okay. So, what you do is you then send this to the what you call is the rectifier, one is the stripper, another is the rectifier. So, in the rectifier, you send the feed somewhere in the intermediate section, again you have this stages. So, you take out fused oil somewhere in the bottom part. This fused oil are nothing but the higher alcohols. Okay. There may be some higher alcohols also getting produced because of the fermentation reaction, and you take it out. Then uh, what you do? You send the lightens from the top through a vent and you vent out the gas, the lightens. Okay. Take out the lightens from here. Okay. Now, somewhere in between, so whatever remaining again you send it to the, uh, you know, the stripper. So, whatever is coming out, you again send it to the stripper. So, it forms a good heat integration unit. Now, somewhere at the top part, you take out the solution. Now, here you will have primarily an azeotropic mixture of ethanol and water. You need to separate it out. Now, here benzene is used as a entrainer. So, this is what the azeotropic distillation unit, it has a dehydration unit first, you have a dehydration unit, and a benzene stripper. So, in the dehydration unit, what you do is, there is a column here, again it is a stage column. 
because of the azeotropic distillation at the bottom finally you get the dry or uh, fuel grade ethanol because of the azeotropic distillation fuel grade ethanol okay you get fuel grade ethanol and the top you have to get a azeotropic mixture of benzene plus uh, you know benzene plus ethanol plus water primarily benzene primarily benzene so you need to take this up ethanol and water so this you send it to a decanter you separate out the liquid part okay and send it to finally a benzene stripper so in the benzene stripper you strip off the ethanol so what you have at the below is some waste product or you can say the waste water and the benzene which is obtained is again sent back i mean it will be sent back somewhere here back to the so benzene is recycled back it is stripped off from the benzene stripper and sent back to the dehydration unit but there may be some benzene also getting out from this waste water so what you do is that you put some makeup benzene somewhere here um, some makeup benzene okay so this is the entire process how it works so you have a fermenter to the left side and then in between you have a rectifier and so you have this entire thing is called beer distillation unit these two columns initially you have this a stripper and then a rectifier a stripper and rectifier and after the rectifier it goes to the azeotropic distillation unit where you have a dehydration unit and a benzene stripper so in this actually the distillation occurs and you get fuel grade ethanol at one end and the azeotropic mixture of benzene primarily benzene at the top end this benzene is then removed from the stripper and again sent back to the dehydration unit this is the way the entire process for the manufacture of fuel grade ethanol from molasses is given so now another process where you want to get off from this disadvantages is the hydro deoxygenation the hydro deoxygenation of vegetable oil provides an alternative to transesterification so if you don't want to do this reaction of transesterification you can also use the process called as hydro deoxygenation it's also called as green diesel or renewable diesel which consists of branched alkenes the chemical structure of the green diesel molecules is identical to that of conventional diesel molecules the co-products are propane and naphtha whereas by-products include carbon oxides and water in the catalytic reactor what happens is vegetable oil is mixed with fresh feed so it is mixed with fresh and recycled hydrogen and turned into branched alkane rich diesel fuel so let us see the process for this so water and carbon dioxide produced by the deoxygenation reactions are separated from the hydrocarbon product that has been completely deoxygenated so the deoxygenated liquid product is then fractionated in order to remove the minute amount of liquid fuel by products the excess hydrogen is again captured and returned to the reactor for recycling one of the most important economic advantages of hdo approach is that bio based feedstocks may be processed at refineries with existing equipment hence minimizing capital expenditure so you may operate this hydro deoxygenation unit in the refinery itself so that is what is been patented by uop or eco fining the, the process the company which has licensed this let us see the flow sheet of this so what happens is you have a let's say uh, a central part is the reactor with the catalyst you have the re reactor with the catalyst here you have the catalyst so you have the vegetable oil coming here as the source oil as the source and uh, what you have is so the reaction occurring and you separate you decant decant the water and send the remaining part to the what you call the fractionator the 
fractionators again it is a tray type structure so ultimately what you do it's a like a distillation column you separate out the components so the co-products as i told you it is propane and light ends propane and light ends and naphtha is the intermediate product and you have the green diesel coming out at the bottom. This is another of the process. Now what happens? You have the vent which comes out you send it to a scrubber. So what the scrubber will do? It will separate out the CO2 and allow the hydrogen to be recycled. So this hydrogen is then sent here back to the initial feed. So you have hydrogen here as well as hydrogen coming as a fresh source. So this is the recycle hydrogen. Okay. So you have a reactor here. then you have a separator and then you have a fractionator. So now it produces useful products such as naphtha and propane because naphtha is very useful in oil refinery or is naphtha is the primary product where you process and produce petrol and diesel. Okay. Now let us see what are the difference between green diesel and biodiesel. So green diesel, what I can do is I can compare the oxygen content O2, then the sulphur in ppm. What are the fact? I should then the heating value. In mega joules per kg. So this joules needs to be in then uh, I can also the distillation range and cetane number this is very important because it will tell the anti knocking characteristics I have already studied I make you uh, understand the cetane number earlier then the stability and finally how much of CO2 is emitted CO2 emissions that is very important for any of the fuel this will give an kg per millijoule of mega joule of energy formed. So if I want to there will be three sources that is normal oil then you have the biodiesel then you have green diesel from UOP. So this so let us compare three processes O2 wet percent is 0 is almost 0 biodiesel because you have the biomass because it is 11 wet percent. So this is I will say it is in wet percent. Okay. Then green diesel is also again 0. So oil and green diesel are similar. Sulphur content you know oil has sulphur compound but it is less than 10 because it is processed. So this oil means oil based fuels I am talking about. But here biodiesel it is nothing it is less than 1 again here it is also less than 1. In the heating value it is around if I want to write down it is 43 near about this is less 38 and this is almost close to oil or petrol 44. Distillation range is around 470 to 620 Kelvin. This is 470 to 620 Kelvin then 610 this is a higher heat distillation range 625 Kelvin. And if I compare green diesel, it will be much less 535 to 590. So this is one important where you are saving energy. Cetane number is 40 in this case is reasonably less as compared to biodiesel which is 50 to 65 and green diesel which is pretty high because they are branched alkenes are formed 70 to 90. Stability is very good as we know which is poor stability of the fuel is also again good. CO2 emissions are around 0.08 the here it scores the biodiesel and this is further better. So overall this green diesel you know it is a good technology intervention so that is why UOP has licensed it and it is going on in a 
commercial scale. So uh, maybe that is what where we need to approach. So if this green diesel can be operated or can be produced from uh, you know some waste or agricultural waste or other waste other than vegetable oil. So that is where research is going on. So I finally I will just uh, conclude this lecture but before concluding I would like you to go to this uh, textbook Jacob Molin you see the seven chapter where it has discussed all the biofuels and also go to the UAP process which is a eco finding process this particular link that is the any process where they have given the entire flow diagram for the deoxygenation route of production green diesel thank you mm -hmm.